Okay, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I've had uh, the sawmill for two years and three months. And I've used it for a lot of jobs. I've built the uh, footing forms for my house, my garage. Uh, I've built a deck. I've built um, this sawmill shed. Um, I don't mill wood a lot uh like f for a business and when i was shopping for a mill um i had i usually over research stuff um quite a bit so i probably researched this for about three months looking at the different mills uh the higher end ones the mid end ones and the low end ones and basically it came down to am i gonna like saw milling uh am i gonna do it for a living and at the point I was like thinking, no, it was pre pre, it was a little bit pre COVID. Yeah. I, yeah, I would say it was just as COVID started. So I didn't know which direction I was going to go. I was retiring. So basically I knew I had a big property with lots of wood. So it's like, all right, let's get a mill. Not necessarily the cheapest one I could find, but not a lot of money. So if I, if, if it figured out that I, didn't like milling or it just wasn't something I was interested in after the fact, then it wouldn't be a big loss. But two years and three or four months later, I'm still using that same mill. Um, and I've seen other mills online and in person. Yes. Would it be nice to own a $35,000 mill? Yes. Or 80 or 50 or even 10. Yes. But can you do the same thing with a a low budget mill yes but there's things that you have to like babysit while you're milling to see that your boards are true like I can shave a board that's a, a almost paper thin but there's certain things that you have to go through with it to make sure that everything's set up nice so is it as sturdy as those beefy ones no can it be knocked out of square yes um, so basically I'll just show you my low budget Chinese import uh, mill. Um, this one was purchased from Canada, Toronto, from a distributor called Forest West. I believe they have an outlet in Toronto and uh, I think they sell uh, products in Australia as well. But basically it's, they're probably all made in the same factory, you know, as Harbor Freight or something like that. This one I bought, uh, rather than import my own, which with no recourse to call anybody, I contacted these guys. The price really wasn't much more to do it through them. And then you've got someone that you can call. And thankfully, they're still in business two and, two and a half years later. Um, so that was why I based my choice. I, I kind of think about things in a money level. It's like, how much is that mill going to cost me? And how much am I going to save from it? And if there's no savings, I got other things to do with my life. You know what I mean? Like, uh, when wood started getting really expensive, we cut the wood for the formings. It's like that would have been a two or three thousand dollars savings. This uh, shed that I built was probably twenty five hundred dollars worth of material. Easy. Um, I built a. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot. I built a, uh, a screened in porch for my house that i did the calculations i milled it and i planed it i've got a little uh dewalt 12 inch planer great investment great investment for what you pay for it sure it's not high end you know it's not going to run eight hours a day for for 52 weeks of the year but uh great investment so that uh screen in porch i did the calculation on that that would have been 20 2400 worth of lumber so with the 24 there the th almost probably three thousand here the deck the, the forms, I've probably saved $10,000. The mill in December, no, it, it was uh, October 2020. This mill cost me roughly with the eight bed, uh, the bed extension that I bought for so I could do 16 inch lugs. This mill run me about $3,800 Canadian. So that at the time was like a dollar twenty five US. So you're even about $3,000 US. Anyways, let's go over the looks of it and what how you can make this mill do exactly what the big expensive mills and i'll show you where it it's lacking in features so basically you've got your cross beams 
which basically what I do periodically is you will take a level and go across the cross beams, making sure that they're true. You know, every once in a while, you don't have to do it every time you use it, but it, if you're going to do something that you need precision, then that's when you would check everything. Uh, basically, same as up and down here. Check for that. And where these join, these are basically these are basically three sections. Maybe I'll go over here in the shade. It's really sunny today and a lot of snow on the ground. So, so basically, you've got three. Let me see if I can get this to get in. This is a, a joining point. So this, this section there runs that way. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? This thing's a little bit wonky. I'm gonna disconnect it and do it by hand. Okay. So now you're by hand. So sorry if I'm a little jerky. This one has stabilization in it. But anyway, so you got three sections. That's the extra section. I believe it was like $500 for the extra bed. Um, I don't cut 16 that much, but I cut a lot of 12 and 14. You know, the odd 16, but for 12 footers you kind of need that i don't know if you could probably do a 12 I, i'm not sure what 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 the length is uh standard and then uh here's your other joint right here right there so these three six rails actually one two three four five six they join together so what i do periodically to make sure everything's straight is that you come down here and you eyeball straight down there to look for any rises in it. This one, I whacked it the other day, so it's got a little bit of a curve this way, like that way. Don't, it's not, that's not that important. It's just make sure that your length down that angle is straight. There's no uh, kinks. This mill gives you little adjustable legs that you can uh, raise up and lower. You can see that far side is higher because that side of the the wood that I've got it sitting on is higher. These are on 12 by 12 uh, old dock board, dock cedar uh, from an old dock that I purchased and took apart. So I've got this set it on uh, concrete, like a three or four inch concrete slab. I had a concrete left over from the house build. So I made a real quick form in the shape of this and then they filled that with concrete just to give it a good base. So anyway, so that's basically what you're dealing with. You're dealing with three sections now though, some more expensive mills it's all one piece and they're a lot beefier this does the job you know what i mean this does the job okay then we'll go to we'll go to the, the uh, clamps there's uh, two adjustable clamps i don't use this that much up to 10 feet over 10 feet i use this one for stabilization as you can see this one here the log that i have on here now is uh pretty big this is a 26 inch mill so it has available a mouth that will cut 26 uh let me just see what this one is. Yeah, with the it's about it's about a fifteen, but it's a uh, pop, poplar. Anyways, um, so you've got your clamps uh, that that you can tie down the log, and then let's go on this side. Then here's your uh, stops, which they're adjustable up and down. I have there's two longer ones. These ones are. I had the longer ones in this when I started the log, but now I've gone back down to these uh, to finish finish cutting it up. You know, there's lots of videos of guys hitting these and stuff like that. So the standard that that that's standard with this mill. Um, th like I said, this is the uh, so just going around the other side. I shut the camera off because I don't want to have you guys get all jerky. So basically, you've got a 26 inch saw, 26 inch blade, uh, quite commonly available from anyone. I bought blades from uh, uh, Woodland Mills. I bought blades from uh, Range Road in Alberta. And I bought blades from Forest West. It's just a matter of who had them in stock at the time. I don't burn through blades that, that much. Um, but uh, I'm a little bit abusive, whereas I don't change the blade as often as I should. And I've snapped a few. Um, so, yeah. So this mill comes with a 15 horsepower uh, knockoff engine electric start. Never had an issue. I don't doesn't have an hour meter on it, but I'm gonna say I don't know, maybe 200 hours on it so far. It's got your water tank up top, pretty standard. The only thing that's a little bit wonky is this uh, this water on off. I'd kind of like something a little bit more, uh, but that's that's not a big deal. Like that's you can you can modify that. Uh, I just haven't had time, and it works. 
but I would like something that you don't it's sort of mounted that you just kind of this one you kind of have to do do with uh, two hands basically that's it um, this one is a uh, like I said electric start gas 15 horsepower uh, 26 inch saw your 15 horsepower is pretty much as low as I would want to go I know there's mills they sell 23 inch that are um, basically here let me switch this around you know since looking at a mill while I'm talking I know they sell uh, 23 inch mills 19 inch mills with uh, 9 horse 8 horse will it work yes if you're going to get something other than softwood it's gonna it's, it's gonna struggle so I kind of recommend spending the money for the 15 or the 16 or the 14 horsepower Honda um, but honestly this thing this thing's been pretty bulletproof like I don't and, and not anymore I see the point in the Honda and you know what you can just take this out um, if you ever have a problem and get one from Princess Auto or Harbor Freight and throw mount it back on that's not an important issue of the mill it's important that you get it but and then you've got your uh, control here for speed. You've got your hand crank right here, basically for raising and lowering it. This is when I feel you got to spend the money. You know, you can, I could probably jimmy this up with electric uh, winch or electric motor so I can raise and lower it. You mill all day, you get, you're tired of cranking this. You don't want to crank this anymore. But budget mill, you know what I mean? So. I know there's guys that have added a gear on here and a gear down here and they can operate it with an electric winch off the battery. Like I said, the other thing too is that battery, that's, that's two years, three months old. That That's still the stock that came, by that came with it. So decent battery too. Like that quality was pretty good. Um, let me switch it back so we can... Um, so yeah, your, your throttle as you walk forward, it's got a gauge. I really didn't use the gauge that much in the beginning because it never seemed to be where where in my head I was so I just measured it but now I've got like this mark here I put in I know that board that's on the mill if I mill it it's going to be six inches tall when I'm done so I've sort of made that little nick there myself which was is six inches I guess but um, when you're new to milling you, you you do a lot of tape measuring and you, you don't trust the mill that much of where you're at but then once you get the hang of it and you pay attention you can do the um, height adjustments like with this one here i'll do is i'll mill down this log and then i'll crank it back one full turn come back and when i go down five turns which is one turn back where i was then four more that's exactly one inch so that that's nice now that i've learned that trick that's what i do now if i'm doing one inch boards so four rotations of this crank down is one inch so eight rotations you're down two inches basically like that so um, let me just open this one up here so I do a lot of cedar and with cedar the, the the bark on the cedar is pretty hairy and 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 fibrous and it'll come off and you'll have to open this up and clean that dump chute out over there clean that dump chute out so and then you can access your thing uh, the clutch the belt I have never I got to replace this belt because it's getting pretty thin but I have not yet replaced that belt uh, your wheels adjustments for tensioning tightening the belt i run my belt i run my uh, band pretty tight you know you, you when when you uh are cutting wood and you start getting waves in your cut like, like it's like a surf surf wave it'll it'll go in and when it hits a a denser part of the log it'll lift up and go back down when you start getting those waves that means your bit blade is 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 not is getting dull so basically uh yeah, my thoughts on the 15 horsepower is pretty minimum. Uh, the, these decals, I just built this shed, you, which you've seen in another video. So this thing has been sitting out in the sun for two and a half, two, two years and three months. So the decals kind of shrunk on it. But anyways, that's just the, the company's decals they put on it. Um, it's got the uh, adjuster bar for the belt tightening. So you have to loosen this off when you take change the belt, tighten it back up, get the tension. You uh, line up the straightness of the thing so that it tracks true with with this thing because the mechanism is inside this bar so you tension that up uh the raising and lowering the wheels i keep spraying oil on them every once in a while for the rollers basically so what we'll do is we'll uh do a little bit of a, a demonstration on this mill cutting i haven't run it for a couple of days as you can see the snow on this log from sitting here but uh, this is it's popular but it's it's tough it's tough 
So uh, I mostly cut cedar, and the this saw cuts through cedar like butter, no issues at all. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, let's uh, fire it up and uh, do a test. said cutting not a problem that blade is not the sharpest and that is a big piece of wood like I said that's uh it's poplar which is not it's a hardwood but it's not the hardest hardwood but that's a 14 inch uh, slab so it did it it didn't bog down and uh it didn't move and if I can show you what I'll do is I'll reverse this back see down there oh let's get you back up like it's pretty basic like it's it's a cut like if you're doing rough sawn this thing will do it all day if you want something smoother then you plane it like i said my my planer is only only 12 inches uh so this would not fit in my planer but i'm gonna i'm milling these for a siding on another shed I'm just gonna use it as a board and batten uh poplar apparently is no good for on the ground use but it's it's okay for uh if, as long as it's not touching the ground. 
so basically yeah so there's your clamps there's your uh uprights your uh your stop your stops on this side stop the lock from sliding off see it so it doesn't move and then you uh fire up fire it up make your cut throw the thing off and like i said as long as you check let's put this back like i said as long as you check the straightness of the rails and make sure the uh, periodically make sure the adjustments are uh, proper then uh you'll cut straight wood with a cheap chinese mill it uh, doesn't need a lot of money like i said the bells and whistles are uh not on this like the automatic razor and lower and uh and uh and and you they, they even have the wood misers that have like the thing that actually propels it you don't even have to push it but like i said i'm not kind of a guy that likes to spend a whole whack of money just for no reason until i try it and then uh as you can tell with other stuff i've bought like uh the chinese excavator for how much time you use it do you want to spend double the money you know what i mean will it be fine yes stuff like that so i do spend money i'm not cheap i do spend money when you have to but i look at the value that you're going to get back from it hang on let me just wipe my nose here you know what i mean like uh same with my uh champion uh log splitter sure an eastern made would be great but am i gonna cut fifteen thousand dollars with a wood that it's gonna pay for itself you know what I mean? So am I going to do it for a living? Yes. If you're doing it for a living, spend the money. But if you're not doing it for a living, you're not going to see your return on, on that investment. That's why I bought this mill. Like I said, two years, three months ago, this thing ran uh, me 30, 3,800 bucks. I went and picked it up in Toronto. I assembled it. It's not that difficult. Like you just got to go online and get pictures. The, the instructions are not uh, the greatest, but once you understand what you're building, it's easier to put together. Um, and yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to upgrade financially. I don't see it being worth it for how little I do, even though it's not like a little, um, it's a fair amount, but this works fine. Like sure. It's inconvenience cranking that crank, but yeah, you just, I just don't, don't see it for the occasional user. You know, of course I'm not moving it around either. So I don't, it's not one of those trailer models, but, um, uh, so yeah, for me, importance was that I can call someone in Canada and say, hey, you know, I got a problem with this. And uh, they, they're usually quick to send me back the emails. And like I said, I bought this two years, four months ago when I wasn't real uh, clued in on the importing situation. But now that I've imported, I know some things, if you want to wait, you want to pay the shipping. Sometimes you don't save a whole lot of money and then you're on your own. So excavator is a different thing i'm pretty good mechanically i can take that apart and fix it they're pretty basic even a sawmill is pretty basic but when you're new to the sawmill it was a little bit scary at first but yeah do you, so do you need to spend big dollars on, on a wood mill no would it be nice yes but are you going to pay that back it's all financial for me like just looking at the cost versus the return so like i said i've closed i'm between eight to ten thousand dollars of the wood you know, and your time, your learning curve, you know, stuff like that. I get my wood for free, so that helps too. If you're buying it, then that's something else you gotta look at, look at as far as actual cost. Two by fours got up to like nine dollars, ten dollars a two by four at some point there two years ago, but now they're back down to four dollars. So, would it be quicker just to go buy the wood? Sometimes, um, but it's just a matter of what you have time for and uh yeah i don't see any issues with buying a uh, low budget uh, sawmill for a home user so anyways that's it hope that was uh helpful all right